All right, guys, Dokkan time again, and today we're going to how to build the Super Saiyan Vegeta Easy A right here. So it, we're going to be going over this guy's Easy A, and then we're going to be going over this guy's Easy A as well. Um, they're both pretty straightforward. I, I will I will admit they are pretty straightforward as far as how you should build them or how you should have already built them, because these are Easy A's, I mind you. So... Um, pretty much straightforward. He greatly raises his defense on super. Attack and defense 110 plus another de defense plus 30 on super. 15% attack per key sphere. He launches an additional super with seven or more key spheres. And then he has a great chance of changing SDR key spheres to fizz key spheres. So, I mean, as of right now in this state, he's launching an additional attack. Uh, he's stacking defense, so that's two guaranteed super attacks as long as you grab seven key spheres. Now, you could get some really bad RNG, and you might not even be able to actually do that. You might be stuck with hoping for hidden potential RNGesus and hoping that comes out okay. Um, thing to keep on mind here, thank you, Halford, for your stats as usual. Um... If you get that seven key spheres, this is a turn one thought process, by the way, and you, you do a triple super, you can get up to 500k defense. You have to triple super, though. That's a really, really bloody low, really low. <laughs> it's a really low chance to actually get um, to that defense marker with no guard or damage reduction. He's pretty much instantly getting your team almost KO'd in a lot of fights. Uh, hard fights you'd have to protect him or use an item specifically this isn't this is a unit that you're not going to be uh, doing no item runs with i mean you could obviously you know rng jesus is on your side but at the end of the day he's, he's pretty fragile before he transforms uh so if we actually go back to vegeta um, once he transforms let's see what happens here he gets attack and defense 120 still defense plus 40 attack plus 18 per key sphere Still launches an additional attack with seven key spheres. Still can change key spheres, but it's only a 70% chance. This is his actual Achilles heel. Um, this is his real weakness, is that if he just guaranteed to change key spheres to fizz key spheres every turn, that'd be different. But you're also not going to always have STR key spheres. That's the other thing that makes this a very weak ability. Um, you go over to Super Saiyan 2. He goes up to 130 on attack and defense. 20 on per key sphere attack. Uh, you now at Super Saiyan 2 though, keep in mind you only need six key spheres from this point on to launch an additional super. The rest are the same. Uh, after that he goes to God State, 140. Defense goes up to 50 when forming a super. 25% uh, attack per key sphere. And then he only has to get five key spheres to actually perform an additional. Um, and at this point, uh, unless I just missed it, yeah, okay, so once he hits Super Saiyan 2, he automatically changes STR key spheres to physical key spheres. And then once he goes to his um, blue god state, that can't be right. There we go. Yeah, when he goes to his blue god state, he's 150 attack and defense. I feel like that should have definitely been higher. Um, defense plus 50, attack plus 30 per key sphere, disables enemy gets guard with three key spheres. He launches additional super attack with five or more key spheres. Um, he performs a crit at 23 key spheres. That's almost never going to happen. Um, cha changes all key spheres to fizz key spheres once only, and of course, changes STR key spheres to fizz key spheres starting from the third turn from the character's entry turn. So, the annoying thing about him going blue is that you lose this ability for no good reason. I don't know why they decided to do that. They just decided to say, yeah, instead of him just changing STR key spheres all the time, you have to wait for him to appear for the third time after this point. So he loses the key sphere changing thing. He'll get basically an automatic crit if you put him in slot one. Uh, otherwise, you're, you're not going to get that free crit. So he has no built-in crit. He's got built-in additionals. The real question is you have to ask yourself is what do you get, what do you bring in this guy for? What are you what are you doing? Are you gonna bring him in an events that he's gonna be good in for all these categories? Are you gonna use him as some kind of um, beat him up event unit? Um, or are you are you gonna really try to attempt to bring him into the challenging fights in the game? 
because at the end of the day, I, I really feel like the first and foremost thing that is most important is him getting the stacks in with additional. Uh, additional is mandatory for this for this guy, as he's uh, he's greatly stacking his defense all the way up onto his god form. But then when he goes blue, he loses that stacking ability, and it no longer matters. Um, if we go over to Halvard's calculations with five key spheres um, and with eight stacks, I mean, uh, he, he'll be sitting at a very large start of turn defense. I'll give you that much. Like, you know, seven or eight stacks, he's at 771 um, started turn defense. Pretty good. But that's also on a, on a point of you actually getting those. So for eight stacks, that would mean you get two supers here, four, six, and eight. So that's on the idea of the bare minimum so long as you're actually getting both of those super attacks to actually come out. If you get into a situation where you put him in slot two and the slot one unit somehow kills the, the boss, you just lost stacks and it just, it hurts this guy so much. It really does. It just hurts him a lot. Um, I mind you, after he actually supers, he gets a very big buff of um, dan uh, defense. So like... Even if you did get less than the eight stacks, like let's just say you got a, a third additional um, on his first and second, but you didn't get it on his, on his, uh, you didn't even get a second one. You know, it could even out depending on how much your additional is or the instance of it happening. The point is when he supers, he gets like a good 500k defense boost on the first super. And then he'll get an, an additional 100k defense basically on every super after that so he's pretty good defensively i would say once he's transformed if he had anything less than i would say seven stack seven or six stack so if he didn't super more than six times before hitting blue i'd say he's pretty vulnerable and could get you killed from an aoe or even start a turn he could probably get you killed um he's definitely kind of here more so as a defensive option in my opinion I'm gonna personally, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna bring him into difficult fights. He can't, he can't live in difficult fights. So I mean, I'm gonna give him crit. I'm gonna give him a primarily additional and fill the rest out with the crit. Um, I can definitely see where a lot of people would rather just treat him as a pretty much a tank. You know, build up as much as possible, put the rest into dodge. Hope he doesn't die, and hope he lives long enough to uh, secure the win. So I can understand why people would go for additional and then put the rest into dodge. But if you do that, he's the only damage he's doing is whatever damage is getting through on the disabled guard, which isn't a lot. He won't be doing a lot of damage um, unless you get him a lot of key spheres, of course. He could do a decent amount of damage, which is why I'm going to personally be pushing for his crit after I go full additional. That's what I'll be doing. But I understand people will be going for the additional dodge build probably more than likely um i'll probably give him like a three dodge all honesty probably a full three dodge will be the, the maximum i give him maybe five at most uh we'll, we'll see how it goes from there but let's move on to super vachita um this super vachita right here um this super vachita right here so he's all right he's not terrible He's a uh, intelligence type, P plus three, 100 lead, greatly raises attack and def or greatly raises attack, but only raises defense. So that's 50% attack, 30% defense. He does seal, um, so he's got utility. P plus two attack and defense 150, plus an additional attack and defense boost up to 150 more HP. Uh, another additional attack and defense when forming super, 30% chance to crit and launch an additional that has a medium chance. Yeah, 30% at 50% or more. Uh, he performs a crit on android enemies, and then he launches an additional super attack when there's a cell type. So right there, I mean, he's already got two additionals. He's got a guaranteed crit. Um, he's got to meet a 30% chance to um, crit in there. I would say the only time you should be bringing this dude around is probably when you're fighting cell. Like, if you're not fighting cell or an android, I don't see any reason to bring him onto the team. Um, if we look at Alfred's calculations for this one... I mean, without support, I mean, if you're if you're not at full HP and double supering every time, you're you're, you're just not gonna be in a good position. 500k HP is nothing. 
Um, if you manage to get some 40% support, um, you're fighting a cell enemy, and you're actually, um, you know, you, you get it all pumped out. 800k defense is just not enough. So, I mean, honestly, this is not a unit that you're going to be using uh, almost at all. You're going to be using him uh, against specific cell android fights. That's what you're going to be using him against. Um, he's dangerous to bring into red zone fights, as most of the red zone fights are all above the uh, 1 million damage. Uh, even the android one specifically. Like, he could get killed, or get you killed. He's got no guard, he's got no damage reduction, um, and a lot of his stats are also very reliant on your HP. If your HP isn't at max, you're going to feel a very big difference on this unit. So, my, my suggestion would just be to put into his hidden potential like you're only going to use him for fighting a very specific event against a cell or an android um, which in which in that case I would go uh, uh, once again but I once again would go a, uh, a full additional or a dodge build he has everything else built in uh, if you're not taking him against an android or a cell enemy then there's there's virtually no reason to bring him at all um, he's just lacking so much without it because, I mean, really, if you look at all of this, he doesn't have almost half of his passive. He's got he's missing a one third of his passive without fighting an android or cell enemy, and that's just not okay. I mean, thirty percent chance to crit is nice. Um, thirty percent chance to launch an additional is 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 nice as well when your HP is fifty percent or more. But with how low his defense is, it's hard to say where your HP is going to be really at. And with how mediocre this uh, this defense margin here is, it's just it's really just not okay. Cell fights only. Um, you support maybe as a beginner if this is one of your only units or one of your only options. I can see him doing well enough for you. But as far as seasoned players, this just isn't the unit you'll be rocking almost at all. So. You, you really form him to what you're going to actually use him in, which is fighting Red Zone Cell or any Cell boss. You know, it could be a free-to-play event. This guy could be the key to an easy, like, not necessarily easy, but, you know, a restricted type of Cell fight, and he'll just barrel roll straight through a Cell fight, uh, hopefully without getting hit by a super. But anyways, guys, let me know how you're going to actually build both of these Vegetas. And have a good day and a good night.